divas people hello i mean divas. Ah. divas yes and it's it's slightly late at night because we just interviewed jessica, jessica pratt. pratt jessica and pratt people she's in australia and she is amazing australian bel canto soprano right Yes, unbelievable. I love listening to her story about how she started and her adventures in Italy in the beginning of this. I mean, whoa, people, and who she got to work with and how her career started. And it was just a really fun conversation yeah. all about like this last year and what that's meant to her and all that kind of stuff. So a real love, feel love good that. kind of interview, wouldn't you yeah, say? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It was just kind of like three girls chit chatting, you know? Yeah. Great way to get to know Jessica better because honestly, in our opinion, she should be like stellar bel canto soprano. Everywhere. I mean, Maybe. everywhere, people. Yes. yes. This so, girl, superstar. Check it out. Here's a clip. We're tired. We're going to go to bed. Yeah, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Thanks. We love you, Jessica. Thanks for the shenanigans. What advice do you give them? I mean, they must come to you and say, okay, Jessica, what, what am I gonna do? Oh, well, I tell them that opera, uh, the opera industry is not fair and it's not about fairness. It's about working as hard as you can and doing the best you can and to try to control what they can control, what's within their sphere of control and not to fuss about what everybody else is doing, which is not easy, um, especially with social media. I don't think social media helps uh, mentally speaking, a lot of singers because you can get, I don't really look at it myself. I post and then run basically. Um, <laughs> yep. I know that well. <laughs>15 hours people 15 for me 14 for sandra you're the next day yeah i am next day. i keep stuffing up all my lessons online because students book for like thursday and it's actually friday and yeah oh <laughs> no are you doing zoom lessons yeah 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 oh, god i get up at, like this morning 6 30 i started and then i do the europeans in the evening and i'm looking forward to going back to work it's less exhausting <laughs> Teaching, don't you find teaching is more exhausting than singing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Do you demonstrate too while you're teaching? I do. I do. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes not. Depend. I'm doing less and less demonstrating as time goes on because you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, totally. So, so you're in. But we'll tell everybody you're in Australia. I'm in Australia. Uh, I came over here a couple of months ago to visit my dad and ended up staying a bit longer because I have a Hoffman in Sydney. So oh, hopefully okay. that will go ahead. You never know nowadays. <laughs> so How's, it go in a few months. How's it going there pandemic wise? What's the latest? Well, they don't really have COVID. Like they think they do, but they really don't. Um, uh, they have something like 26 cases now in Melbourne. There's a, there's a big scandal because uh, a case escaped from the quarantine hotel in South Australia, traveled to Melbourne, and now it's spread all over Melbourne and they shut down Melbourne for two weeks and Whoa. they're trying to clean it. Queensland shut the border. Nobody's allowed into Queensland. I'm in Queensland. So here there's no, no mask wearing, no nothing. Everything's normal. It's it was, I mean, but they were really strict at the very beginning. So strict. you can't come into the country unless you're a citizen. Yeah. I'm not going to my husband for about five months. Whoa. So, Oh, you, oh, they, you still can't come into the country. You can't come into the country and they're going to extend it until 2022 now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do okay. I need to say anything to that? Wait, 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 wait. So how did, how did Leia Crocetto get over there? If you're working, you can get special permission, but it's not easy. 
um so the opera company can bring people over but mm -hmm. it's it's hard and the mm -hmm. flights are really expensive like i flew over here and i think it costs around ten thousand euros with the flight and the and the quarantine because you have to do two weeks hotel quarantine which you pay yourself and that's three thousand so terrible food oh okay, okay. <laughs> can we can we can we just like i've done that twice now no here in alcohol. canada no alcohol in us Oh, alcohol, can we just talk about how much alcohol cost in those hotels? Well, they won't even tell it to you in the quarantine hotels here. Like they, they, they say that you can, if you order it, because you can order things in the shops mm -hmm. and have them delivered, but they will check the amount of alcohol and they will only give you what they think is okay. And they will give you the rest when you leave. What is okay? I don't know. I didn't ask. I didn't drink. So did I didn't want to drink like alcohol. I could have brought a whole, whole suitcase of booze. <laughs> they would have let you. <laughs> they would have taken it away and locked you in. I bought a bottle. So, so in Canada, it's not two weeks. It's three nights, mandatory stay, and you it, while you wait for your COVID results back. Even if you get them back on the second day, you still have to pay for the three nights. And the mm -hmm. three nights, there are three hundred and sixty-five dollars a night. And yeah. you, you're like you, I mean, the food, food was horrid. And I spent something like one bottle of wine, which I tried to like eke out for three days, you know, <laughs> something like $42 Canadian. <laughs> I, I think I ended up spending a lot on coffee because coffee wasn't included in the food packages. So there was no Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to order it every morning. And in Australia, they have this really weird thing that you can't drink coffee after like midday. So I had to order it before, I think it was 1.30 or there was no coffee. Okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm what sorry. is wrong with that country? I'm sorry, that, that's almost worse than the alcohol. Like, I mean, not, you don't get a 3.30 espresso, like, oh my Lord. And all the coffee shops here are closed. And I keep saying to my sister, what the hell is going on here? I need the coffee in the afternoon. It's how I wake up. Are they just having the afternoon tea time then? Is that where they're getting the caffeine? Not their coffee, but Australians get up like, okay, at the gym I'm going to, they're like, why don't you come to the pump session at 5.30 tomorrow morning? In the morning? And they start at 4.30. What's wrong with them? I'm and sorry. You <laughs> and you know, the meal times, the meal times in the quarantine hotel were 6.30 a.m., 11.30 for lunch a.m., 5 p.m. for dinner. Ooh. Do they knock on your door to to yeah. deliver it? I just ignored them. That's I just the early like, bird special. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to get. Carrie and I, we're going to retire in the villages in Florida. You probably don't know about this place, but um, yeah, we, we talk about that. It's like adult Disneyland and yeah, 55 and up. Yep. And yeah, so. I mean, early bird special is 5 p.m., actually more like 4.30. So you kind of lucked out with an extra half hour there, but that's a hot dang mess, girl. That is horrible. So what did you do? Could you could you go out and exercise? Were you allowed to leave your room? You were not allowed to leave my the room, and my room didn't even have a window that opened, so it was frightening because I, you know, survived COVID and working throughout Europe for the last year and a half, being always outside and in big spaces and like completely relying on open air. And while I was in the quarantine hotel, they kept having cases, and they still do, of people going into the quarantine hotel and catching COVID in the hotel from their neighbors. Year two. And so the whole time not having a window, that was definitely the absolute hardest thing. And the guy upstairs that was a complete exercise freak. So he was like pounding every hour for 15 minutes. And he started at 6 a.m. And he did good hour at 6 a.m. That was great. Back and forth, back and forth. And it's eight steps across and eight steps back. And you learned so, that very quickly, right? Well, I got it. I started it. You know, he left after five days, but then I became that really weird person. I saw like, your videos. You, you're <laughs> like, and this is my, and this is the route that I take. Okay, everybody. <laughs> I got into quite a happy place at the end of it. It was a little disturbing. <laughs> I, I am horrified by this whole discussion. <laughs> Karen lives in the woods in Nashville, so she's like. I mean, it's been a free for all since people, you know, half the people here were like, COVID what? I mean, so I. <laughs> so a bit like here, in that, but no, it's not really because here they obsess about COVID more than in Europe. So like mm -hmm. I hear more about COVID here every day 
and they have these descriptions of the man that had COVID and there's a little like stick man. And then the other man that had COVID that they found. And then the question mark man in between, how did this one get this one's COVID? We don't know. It's a problem. And they go, <laughs> and they do. yeah. And I'm like, Oh, two cases of COVID. Boy, yeah. <laughs> um, they've already done all those. Stuff. The there's a documentary on HBO about the cruise ship that was, I don't remember, maybe off the coast of Japan or something like this, and that they actually even had to cover up the air ducts in these yeah. for these people's rooms because it's airborne. They're like, it's airborne. So it doesn't surprise me that in packed hotels that people yeah. are getting it. Come on. There you know this. COVID hotels here in Toronto. I, I actually talked to the guy that delivered that $42 bottle of wine. I had my mask on and you know, he knocked on the door and I opened the door and he was still there. And I was like, oops, what do I do? You know, so I was like, I'm my mask and he's like, how you doing, ma'am? I'm great. How are you? You know, and he's talking to me and he's, I said, so how is it working here? And he said, well, you know, I didn't have COVID until I started working here. Thank you. like, boom, <laughs> hotel. <laughs> Thank you. Smack. <laughs> oh, but you've, you've survived and you've been yeah. able to stay, right? Being a, yeah, yeah, during the, the, yeah, I did actually sing quite a bit. I was lucky. Um, the first five months I didn't sing, but I don't, didn't want to either because it was just so sad and I just didn't, I don't think I could have if I had to. And then the first couple of jobs were comedies. I just wanted to sing funny things um, because I couldn't quite cope with singing sad things. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so now I'm kind of on the comic operas. More than were you in much. Italy? I was in Italy, yeah. And that's oh. home for you, right? That's technically home? Yeah. Okay. You know, except this last year where I was there for basically a year and a half. Longest time I've ever had to spend with my husband. And? So, it, uh, we're still together. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I met him in Malta, so yeah. this is really yeah. nice. Not particularly happy about me running away to Australia for five months, but... Uh... <laughs> can yeah. and can visit, right? Oh. We're trying. It's just hard to get a flight. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Good looking, yeah. It's impossible. I'm, I'm dealing with that now, trying to get my husband over to Spain to come come with me. And my husband is going to be, I'm doing Tosca. My oh. husband has a contract to be Castel Sant'Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. So I jump off of him at the very end of the opera. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> That's hysterical. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. Let's make this happen. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. but Okay, so what about, I read that you have animals. Do you still have rescue animals, dogs and cats and things like that in Italy? Yeah, and the latest one still still recognizes my voice because he was a little kitten when I left. And uh, it's just a little black cat because, you know, my husband and I, well, we lost two cats during quarantine. Mm. One, and we lost one the year before because my husband had three really old cats. It was like a father, mother, son, family okay. unit. And they were like 18 or 19, 17 and no, 19, 18 and 17 years old. Wow. So they were pretty old. And we lost the father the year before. And then the son died in the beginning of quarantine from cancer. And we literally did everything. We, he was operated. He did like chemotherapy. He did everything. Wow. And he actually survived another six months after that and a good six months. So it wasn't, you know, so bad. But I remember like all the contracts being canceled, like no money. And we're like, you are not dying. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> mm -hmm. He understood. He it's did. Like... Yeah, he got there, poor darling. <laughs> and then oh, after it's he been hard, it, hasn't it? basically just gave up she was just like I got no one to clean anymore so what am I going to do and yeah. so we, did, we got her a kitten but she ended up with kidney failure and we got her a kitten in about I'd say the last two months of her life and she actually came back to life started to take kitten. that was really nice and they were like cuddling the, her last night they were all cuddled up together Aww. so I was, like, I was worried that he would stress her out more but right. he did the first day she was like what the hell is this but um then she kind of you know took over in. Yeah, mm -hmm. the latest edition because we lost three, and um, he's crazy. He's one of those cats that likes to smash everything in the house. Kerry <laughs> <laughs> has a Kerry has a rescue Saint Bernard. Oh, that's human small. He's oh. he's a huge. <laughs> he's a hundred and eighty pound, one hundred eighty four pounds. We just found out, and um, my big monster, my big baby. 
my big drooly yeah uh-huh yeah they draw from it <laughs> okay. my in-laws in had a um irish wolfhound <gasps> those are so they, cool uh, they had a series of irish wolfhounds they're very fond of the breed and they're they're awesome fun they made my he made my Doberman doberman look tiny yep massive <laughs> Oh, but see, you got to spend time with all the animals during the pandemic. So really nice. Yeah. That's but, cool. Okay, I taught my dog to dance. Hmm? I taught my dog to dance. He can like do little moves and dancey things now. And I taught him to press a bell when he wants food and another bell when he wants to go outside. I was going to make him one of those talking dogs, you know, where they can press Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I didn't manage. That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Carrie, your next mission. There you go. I don't know the pilot. I'm, I mean, I don't know. He's so stubborn and the, he's that total typical stubborn St. Bernard, you know, I, I yeah. It's, yeah. it's been drama lately. We've had the, yeah, we've had to feed him chicken for a diet thing. And now I'm trying to get him off of it. And he is so smart and so stubborn that he was like, oh, I see how you took that chicken and put it in my regular food. No, I'm going to take a bite of that, but I'm going to spit everything out, but the chicken. <laughs> And like big booger yeah no. big booger let's talk about let's talk about singing so your father mm -hmm. was a singer yeah yeah he's a tenor tenor and operatic yeah operatic he was singing um solo roles i think with the welsh national opera when my mom was pregnant with me i was the second child so he took a, a serious job you know and uh became a music teacher in the high school and continued doing that but he teaches and he continued to sing in the chorus uh, around the world wherever we moved and doing small roles and things like that and he taught me so he basically wow. you know i used to listen to the lessons he gave like as a child i would just sort of hide in the corner and listen and and yeah i wanted to be a singer so i, I think seven years old i asked if i could have lessons and he said no uh rightly so and told me i had to choose a wind instrument and learn how to play a wind instrument while my body grew so that my breathing mechanism would be, be natural oh. and uh and that i had to play in an orchestra to understand you know what it is to be in an orchestra mm -hmm. and how much they play the singers and <laughs> exactly <laughs> dad you know yeah yeah and uh and you were the rebel teenager that said i don't want to do what you do oh no i want to do what you do cool oh. it <laughs> well i read that it was trumpet you played the trumpet trumpet yeah because um my dad conducted like a community orchestra and so every weekend my brother and i would just play around the the theater where they had this community orchestra mm -hmm. and there was really 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 cute boy who played the trumpet mm. and I, I wanted to get to know the boy so i chose the trumpet and i worked my way right up to sitting next to him that's as far as i got yeah <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but he i i was not the only female inspired trumpeter by the way oh. because when i was singing the queen of the night in covent garden one of the ladies at the end of the show she said to me at the end of the round she said I just clicked like your name's Jessica Pratt. Was your dad Philip Pratt by any chance? Because he went to Australia when I was young and you're Australian. And I'm like, yeah, that's my dad. And she's like, no way, he taught me. And like, that's how I became a musician and in love with music and, and this kind of thing. And, and she said, actually, I played the trumpet before I started singing. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> Why did you choose the trumpet? Same reason. Your dad. This, this boy has inspired many a trumpeter. Oh, I love that. That's hysterical. Okay, now I was in, I played French horn forever and a day, but not because I wanted to be a singer, just because my dad was like, you're going to meet people, you know, well, I had to pick an instrument in school or whatever, but my dad refused to let me play the flute. He was like, no, everybody's going to play the flute. You can choose between the French horn and the oboe. I did. Oh, intelligent. It's working though. There you go. So mm. what'd you say? We, I didn't hear you. I was a flautist. Oh, you were one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so you started with dad. Mm -hmm. And so when did you really start to get super serious about singing and like, yep. Okay. I'm I think, um, 
quite late because I think I was around 19 and I was doing competitions. I was working as a clown on the weekends and I was working as like a secretary <laughs> in the week. And I would basically work from 6 a.m. until 12 and then everything I earned, I would spend on lessons of whoever I could find who I thought was interesting. And I think I remember I came second in this competition. Uh, I think it was the Metropolitan Opera competition for Australia, not the one that you guys have, not the real one. Um, this one had something like $50,000 first prize and second prize was $2,000. <gasps> but I was like, I remember the day, the day after I was like, that was amazing. I want to do this. And I think that's when I started taking it like seriously. Like I really, I was, I was, I was in the photocopy room going, this is not what I want to do. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. That's okay. So was there, was there a person who really inspired you or you said, wow, the music that she sings, I want to do that. Yeah. Lily Kuberle. I thought I was in, in New York with a friend and he gave me a, a tape, you know, the old cassette tapes of uh, Lele Kuberle and she was singing Matilda de Chabran. And I thought that was nuts. It was incredible. And I, I, I actually took about 10 years to call her. I had a number about three years before I, you know, fucked up the courage. And I called her and I said, uh, mi chiamo Jessica Pratt and vorrei studiare con lei. And I'd already been living in Italy for quite a while. And she's like, aren't you Australian? And I said, yeah, and she's like, well, you're American, so you know, we can just talk English. And so, yeah, from, and then I became her student. But before that, there was also Renata Scotto and uh, she was amazing. And I, you know, got, got a lot from working with her for many years in, in Rome. And, and I actually moved to Italy because um, Gianluigi Gelmetti heard me in one of these competitions where I was always second, mm -hmm. and literally always second or third. And he, like, when he announced the winners, he also said, well, I, I, I think, you know, there's another person here who should come to Italy and I invite her personally. And, and that was it. And he said, I'll give her everything that, that the other girl's getting, you know, without the money. And uh, I think at the time I was working at McDonald's, so it was really out of my reach. And, uh, and I wrote to all these people asking for money, saying, you know, like, it's a great opportunity. Can you please help me? And they all said, no, Vermilla included. And, <laughs> and so I was then having like a, at the time I was doing these little concerts for this lady, because she was a singer in my then boyfriend's choir mm -hmm. and I would sing the solos and she asked me to come and sing as like a surprise birthday present for our husband. And then we would do like little fundraisers for gowns and lessons and things like that at her house. And so at one point she just said, Oh, my husband wants to meet you. Uh, you're going to have, we're going to have lunch tomorrow. And I turned up and they were both at this competition and, and basically I sat down to lunch and our husband's like, yeah, so look, you know, I think that, you know, you're a great talent and I don't, you know, he's a businessman, never sponsored an opera singer or music before or anything. And, um, and he said, you're like one of our great sports people and I'm not going to stand by. And so I'm going to give you $40,000. And I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. That's so amazing. And then I stayed there after that. I just moved there amazing wow so when did you when did you really start to get the good jobs i'm still working on that now <laughs> <laughs> i saw you sing lucia at the met it was spectacular uh well i was more of an over glorified co uh, cover at that stage um but no i i i think there's no like one point where there was some because everybody would say you know i'd jump in for a luthier in zurich or i'd jump in for a luthier in berlin and everybody were like oh this is the one and it was never the one there is never a one i think it's always like a slow incrementing mm -hmm. pace it's just you know healthy because i think um sometimes when you jump from nothing to everything it's not healthy like i see some singers just sort of shoot up and they don't have the um, I don't know, like for, for me, I spent 10 years singing in some of the toughest provincial theaters in Italy, seeing the worst kind of, you know, booing and catcalling of colleagues and wow. fights in the platea where you had to just stop singing and wait for them to calm down, police being called, like this kind of thing, you know? 
Um, so then when I got to bigger houses, everything was so easy because everybody is so nice and lovely and the audience is so polite. I mean, the, the Italian audience is polite too. I'm not saying they're not polite, but they are very passionate. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. and even if they love you, if you have a bad night, they let you know about it. Oof. They will they will wait outside and tell you that they didn't like a show or they didn't like the way you interpreted one role or another role. Like I did one, one Lucia, I won't mention where, but it was so hated by the public that the staging that they complained about it for around six years after shows of other operas. They would say, oh, it's great tonight, but why did you do that Lucia like that? You do Lucia, you know that's not how Lucia is. And I'd say, well, you know, we have this thing called a stage director. <laughs> and they have their idea and we have to fit into that idea or you know a conductor has the cuts that they want to do and we can talk to them about it but we cannot they have this strange idea that the singer can just impose everything they want we have all the power anymore it's really did you ever have to pay a clack oh well i'm too stupid to realize every time they ask they don't ask anymore because I'm the Australian that doesn't get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, they come and they knock on your door and they're like, yeah, oh, when is he at When it happened, I had one, he came into the dressing room and I was down south and he came in and he said, Buonasera, Signora Pratt, io sono amico del teatro. So I'm like, oh, well, any friend of the theater is a friend of mine. And I shook his hand, you know, so <laughs> that's good. But there was supposed to be a little bit of cash in there, you know, like, mm. He looked at me and he's like, I'm a friend of the theater. And I shook his hand again. And he's like, oh, no. Okay, we'll have a good evening. And then he went out and uh, proceeded to very embarrassingly loudly applaud the whole first half. Mm -hmm. And then he came back in the interval and he said, so you've seen my work. What do you think? I can come anywhere you want. I can uh, travel. You just have to pay the ticket, the travel, the dinner and the accommodation. I'm all yours. And I said, oh, oh, well, thank you very much. But actually, you know, okay. don't, yeah, don't, don't really need that. We, we don't make enough money anymore to do that. <laughs> Sweet little old man. And he was so passionate. He's like, I can bring my wife too. And I said, well, that's lovely. So how was the second half of the opera? Did he boo you then? Anyway, no, he kept clapping anyway. He doesn't care. And he actually, he travels around quite often and he'll come and say, oh, did you like my work tonight? And Aww. like, he just does it for free now. <laughs> I was so ob ob oblivious to it at, at La Scala. Placido actually had to come and say, um, Sandra, you're supposed to pay them. I said, why? <laughs> yeah, I did, well, they didn't ask. I didn't, like, nobody asked me when I sang there. So I don't, I, don't, I guess they... I wasn't doing the first class. Maybe they don't ask the second class. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. So, so how did how did Bel Canto find you, or did you find it, or how was where did that passion come well, from? I think that was when I went to Rome. I was luck, really lucky because um, so basically, I left everything, my job, my life, uh, the boyfriend. I left him too, poor guy. And uh, I basically turned up in Italy, and I called the theater. And I said, I'm here for the Young Artist Program. And they said, what Young Artist Program? And I said, uh, Gian Luigi Giometti told me there was a Young Artist Program. And they said, well, there's not. He's here in a couple of weeks. Call back. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> and I just moved to Italy. I didn't speak Italian. I didn't know anything. I found, a, like, I just started chatting to a guy on the plane and stayed at, uh, like, a friend of his, like, place for three days. And in those three days, I found an apartment and I'd rented it for six months by the time I called the theatre. And I also didn't have the money to go back to Australia. So I had to stay for eight months. And, uh, and so I was like, okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And then when I came back in two weeks, Gianluigi was like, ah, oh, the kangaroo, si, vieni, vieni. Uh, he still calls me the kangaroo. I don't think he's ever looked at the name, um, but <laughs> which is fine. And uh, and so he said, like, you know, come in, come in. And so I came in and his idea of the arts program was that you just turned up before him every day and you left after him every day, which meant turning up at about 9 a.m. because you had to guess. Nobody told me what the rehearsal schedules were. And then follow them around, watch all the rehearsals, watch everything, and then go to dinner with them all. And I remember one dinner I, I, I got up at about 1 a.m. I said, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm going home. I'm tired. And everybody was like, 
I said, sorry, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> I'm tired. That is insane. We go to bed early and get up at five. <laughs> Cross it. Then you have lunch at 11. <laughs> <laughs> lunch at 11, not at 1 a.m. So that pretty oh. much like happened by the seat of your pants. Like really, yeah. I mean, it was, that's insane. That's scary. Like six months. I stayed there for six months. I watched everything, every rehearsal, every show. Sometimes there would be like big divas, like diva divas, you know, and, uh, I remember one time there was one who I loved. She was amazing. I won't mention her. She's like, yeah. And she kept looking at me badly because, you know, you never mm -hmm. know are you? Mm -hmm. Especially soprano looking people. And uh, and she was giving a story about something. And then she turned around and she like looked at me. She said, a kia lei. And I'm like, oh, I'm just a student from Australia. I said, enough. And I was like, okay. Va via, right? <laughs> yeah. No, she, let she let me stay. She was like, sit. Oh, well, gee, thank you. I think she deemed there wasn't a threat with my... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my... So... so the first thing I watched was Maria de Villa, Raul Jimenez, and Daniela Barcelona wow. singing Baby. Wow. And it broke my heart. Every night I was crying. Every rehearsal I was crying. I couldn't get enough of it. I actually walked around with a photo of the last scene for, like, years in my wallet. It's my inspiration. And uh, and I remember one day showing it to Raul and saying, oh, you know, I have a photo of you, Mama, and then realizing how creepy and weird that was. <laughs> You're my wallet, by the way. He's yeah. just look, he's like. <laughs> yeah, but what an amazing cast, oh my gosh. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. And then I, I had Darina Takova doing um, Semiramide at the next show. Yeah. Like, it was a really good time to be there. It was yeah. really good. You knew that Bel Canto was for you. Well, I didn't, but I wanted it to be. I was like, I want to sing like that. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> I hope it works. I and I went in the middle of the night going, just a deal. I love it. Oh my God. And so then Lucia has become your, your role. I mean, that's, that's like your calling card. What like I sing the song in every theater. Pretty much not, not so many in France, but everywhere else. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, do you have any desire, any passion to move into maybe bigger repertoire someday? Maybe one day when I grow up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bigger bel canto repertoire, not nothing other than bel canto, if I can mm help. -hmm. Like the one that starts with a capital N? Yeah, well, I, I have to do that at some point. Mm -hmm. And within a few years, so we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> a big N. Mm -hmm. And I did it in secret, not so much of a secret since I'm saying it here, uh, a few years ago in China. Oh, you tried I, it? I there's a DVD floating around because uh, I was told by a friend. <laughs> what did you think of it? Oh, I like it. I like it. It's nice. Okay. I just don't want to get like onto one road and leave the rest. That's all. Yeah. And I I also really prefer the the super rare offers. Like I, I like it. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Is your dad? Does he like critique you after a show? He's learned not to do it during, but my husband still does it during. We've had some quite big fights and intervals where he comes in and just tells me what he thinks. So I'm like, this is not the moment. <laughs> do you still want to stay married? Like, zip yeah. it. He cares, like, but I care. And I'm like, I know, darling, but this is not the moment. Yeah, not the time, babe. <laughs> Usually now he comes. He comes like at the first orchestra rehearsals, and and then like we can just sit down and have a talk about everything. But he has had a few like big reactions from me when he said things in an interval at an opening night and things like that. I'm like, dude, I have to go back out on stage. <laughs> Bye. So much Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Was he a singer? Or right now. <laughs> So was he classically trained at all or anything? No, no, he'd never heard an opera until um, we met, actually, our first date. I invited him to come and see me sing because, well, I, I met him in a bit of a strange situation. I'd, um, I was, it was like online dating. I was looking for somebody who knew nothing about opera. I didn't want another opera singer and I didn't want an opera fan. Mm. And uh, so basically the criteria were you have to be able to travel, you have to be independent, and you have to um, not have ever seen an opera. And uh, he did, he did enter all those criteria and it was lovely. 
first year. Everything was wonderful. Mm. Now, now he has a very good year. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Which is cool. It was, it's great. And I relied quite heavily on him actually, especially with like staging and uh, he's very good eye for staging and things like that. And, and nice. Um, Does he travel with you most of the time or? COVID, he hasn't traveled with it in COVID times, um, but usually he does. Like I see him every few weeks because he'll come to a place in the beginning, then he'll go and work some and then come back during the orchestra rehearsal so he can tell me what he picks. And then he'll stay for the night and then he'll go away and then he'll come back and we'll go to the next place. And it's kind of like that. He's yeah. super sweet. He's really he's super sweet. Awesome traveler. Like he really, sometimes he does insane things. Like there was one time, of course, more, more early in the relationship, now he's relaxed a bit. But um, I remember one day he he fl- he went down he drove me down to Southern Italy for a concert and then I flew to Venice but he drove up to Venice with the dogs met me the next day and then drove back down and I flew somewhere else like he he just like he'll literally drive nine hours and be fine like he's wow. so strong like physically we well, did that from Malta right. Yeah, we well, yeah we did that. We did two trips in the in the in the truck to Malta, and we packed up the house and just me and him, <laughs> and then drove back all across Italy in COVID. Isn't that crazy, Karen? <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I read in an article that you somebody had asked you about your future, like what you wanted in your future. I think it was in two thousand nineteen. And you had said something like, I eventually when I retire, I want to have like a Tuscan villa and make olive oil and all that kind of stuff. Is that still with, you know, with the pandemic? I feel like the pandemic has totally just changed everybody's opinion about life and how they want to live their life. And especially us in this business that are constantly on a, you know, roller hamster wheel. Um, I was wondering if any of that had changed for you. No, no, I bought the villa and uh, I made the oil because we had time with the COVID. So I made the oil for the first time and my husband says he's nearly sold it all. Um, awesome. So, well, we, we sell it through, um, there's a guy that made it with us and so he sells it himself. And uh, we had uh, a really nice time, like it was so nice. Wow. So you already did it and you still wanna go back to do that like when you're done wor- you know, singing, working, whatever. If I'd paid off the mortgage, I'd do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a darn little thing, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, you could you couldn't give it up. You yeah, love singing too much. I know. When I start hearing the music, I'm like, oh god, I can't wait. Um, so yeah, it's true, that. isn't it? Yeah, so that's cool though. I love that you have two loves. Then, mm-hmm. so how yeah. do you feel about social media? I'm not great with social media. I kind of pick it up and drop it like a hot potato. Um, so I'll go at it for a few days and then get bored. And then mm-hmm. what's well, not even bored. It's just like, I don't see the point. Like right now I'm not posting anything because why would I post anything? All I'm doing is being a nanny. Uh, I'm just hanging with my nieces, trying to take care of my parents and go to the gym every day. What is that? And teach thing? Zoom lessons. And teach Zoom lessons, but mm-hmm. I don't put my makeup on for that. Like I would have to put makeup on every day. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm the, sorry. The makeup only happens for these things. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was putting the makeup on, I was like, oh, this is nice. I remember this. Yeah. Oh, this is nice again. <laughs> things like the simple pleasures, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We take a lot for granted. Definitely. Really so going back to the Met, mm-hmm. are you going back to the Met? If they open, I will. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have future contracts? You yeah, don't have I have what, but... Cinderella, the, the Christmas Cinderella, which is like one of my favorite things, the Christmas things, because it's been in Europe. And also being a call for a soprano, they cut everything but my role. So it's great. <laughs> you okay. Know, like, hey. So I have to get to sing the, the big bits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. And North America, anything else in North America? Because you, you, we really don't see you yeah, much. Right. Much in America, in, in North America. Um, this year I have Dallas as well. I'm going to sing "Flight" by Jonathan Doe, which is oh cool. Oh, wow. I love it. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that a lot. Uh, so yeah, I'm just working on that. I had to order it again here because I, I left it in Italy, not thinking that I'd be here for so long. So I ordered this for it. But you, you like singing in Europe more, you think? 
Well, Europe is easy because I'm close to home. And like, especially Italy, for example, if I sing in Milan or Rome, I can get home in an hour and a half on the train, which I love. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and even Arena di Verona is an hour and a half. There's a train that leaves just next to my house. And if you get the right train, it's an hour and a half. So like, there's a lot of, there are a lot of places I can sing in, in Italy, especially. And in Europe, because the European flights are, you know, they're like an hour, mm-hmm. two hours. You go home for the weekend and that really is different to being on the other side of the world. Do you have a desire to be like, you know, Renee Fleming, famous, famous, famous? Or do you like just being Jessica Pratt, you know, Italian? I think ideally I would, um, no, I would like to do a little bit more in certain theatres because it also means I would like to do some better productions, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the Italian productions, but they're not all great. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them can be quite um, spontato, um, and other ones can be amazing. Like it really, it's really hit and miss. Uh, but that's the same in the bigger theaters too. Sometimes they're just crap. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with different people because I think as you as you grow, to, as you work with different people, you grow. Like you know, mm-hmm. everybody influences you. So I don't like it when sometimes I find myself stuck in a rut and because you're working in the same places all the time and so you don't have that challenge of a new place and a new space vocally to speak right. with a new audience to play with um so that that i would like to continue to to grow which is growing um but i do love singing in spain and italy because i think that the spanish and the italians really have a passion for bel canto and they they go a bit nuts about it and i think that's great and there the other countries do appreciate it but it's not the same feeling you get back from the orchestra or the audience because when the orchestra understands every word that, that you're singing, they respond differently. And so it's just a slightly different atmosphere that can be created. And also the smaller theatres are better for bel canto music because you can do more colours, whereas in the bigger theatres you just tend to have to sing loud and it's not as – there's just not as much of a palette to play with. So That's true. I That's do a like to put it. Yeah. yeah. You've also been compared to, I mean, sorry, but I hate when people compare us to other people, but Joan Sutherland, I mean, it's, it's out there. It's, out there. <laughs> just, it's in print. I have dark hair and I'm not Greek, you know? Um. <laughs> I get the callus all the time, you know, it's like, mm, I'm just Sandra, you know, but, but listen, well, we have to acknowledge it. I mean, what we do is you box people in, we're well, not box people in, but you know, you associate you know, because that's how we understand the world. And so that's fine. I come from Australia. I'm tall and I sing call it a repertoire, but um, we're very different. Like she had an enormous voice and, uh, and she also did a lot more French repertoire, which I would like to do. Um, she didn't do much Rossini. I wish she did more Rossini because I think that would have been spectacular, especially for the Cole Brown roles. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, that would have been cool. Um, but yeah, no, I don't really care because I mean, it's just, you know, if they're Italian talent, they're Pavarotti, the next Pavarotti. People right. can't actually understand that we're not the next anybody. We just right. us. Exactly. That's I, their problem. I, <laughs> I, it's just, I, I don't understand why you are not singing all the big opera houses, all the lead roles, because your technique is so spectacular. You really are. I mean, it's, it's so amazing listening to you because it's even up and down and you don't you know those singers where you listen to them and you kind of go yeah you're not sure they're gonna make it till the end of the night yeah, <laughs> yeah the quick well, is, well, uh, not even the end of the night sometimes just up the scale you're like oh oh lord <laughs> i know seriously but so dream role there's these singers when my, my students are like oh, have you been listening to such and such stop it stop it now <laughs> no well, what advice them, do you give the young kids nowadays? She's special, but she's not the same. She's not, she has a special technique. So don't, don't copy that. Mm-hmm. What advice do you give them? I mean, they must come to you and say, okay, Jessica, what, what am I going to do? Oh, well, I tell them that opera, uh, the opera industry is not fair and it's not about fairness. It's about working as hard as you can and doing the best you can and to try to control what they can control what's within their sphere of control and not to fuss about what everybody else is doing which is not easy 
um, especially with social media, I don't think social media helps uh, mentally speaking, a lot of singers because you can get, I don't really look at it myself. I post and then run basically. Um, <laughs> yep. I know that well. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I know when my husband starts getting a bit antsy, I'm like, you've been to stop looking at other soprano speeds, Ricardo, because I know they're singing right now, but I'm pretty sure they're singing for nothing just to sing. And that's their choice. That's fine. But it's not where I am right now. I want to be with my father and my family and, and I'm okay with that. And I'll be singing in a couple of months. I have years and years of contracts. There's nothing to worry about. Um, but it's easy for people to get like, you know, stuck in this thing of seeing everybody else's happy, perfect life. Just and, like- there, and, and then I just, I dipped my toe in TikTok when I got here, when I was in quarantine, I did. And that, that is fertile ground people. That is fertile ground. Okay. I got on it. I couldn't get off my, I was in bed giggling, laughing. I laughed so hard. Like I shook the bed and, and then my husband's like, what are you doing? What is happening? And I told him I was on TikTok and he's like, a- move, remove that immediately from your phone. Cause he's it guy. And I was like, what? And he's like, that does not need to be on your phone. So I took it off, but I'm kind of, I mean, now everybody has it. So whatever, but I just kind of, I don't want it on my phone because I'm afraid that I'll never come out. Like, yeah, yeah. Radical. No, well, I went on it about before uh, COVID. I actually went on it because I was stalking a, a niece of mine, just trying to keep an eye on her. And like, I wanted to know. I saw yeah. she'd gone on TikTok and I was a little bit concerned. Uh, so I went on TikTok and, and I didn't really pay much attention to it then. But then this last time, I thought, oh, I'll put some short videos up. And there were like a whole bunch of like 160,000 views within 24 hours and yep. hundreds of comments. And but I'd say more than half these people don't go to opera. They don't see opera, but they were really keen. They were like, oh, that's awesome. Can you do yeah. that? Can you do another one? Can you do that exercise again? Because I'm just putting up exercise videos, you know? Yeah. Local exercise videos, not exercise videos. <laughs> <laughs> Although I may start that. You never know. Oh, if it works. Uh, <laughs> Hey, they said social media. They didn't say what we had to do. Uh, so yeah, no, it's, it's kind of cool to speak to people who also don't know anything about opera and like, oh, right. maybe I'll show. And that's exciting. That I that find is. Really that's cool. Actually. That's really cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. there's really a lot, a lot, a lot of people. That's. I've on- never been on TikTok, so they're fascinated. Oh. It is. It is insanity. I just, I mean, it was insane what I saw. And then like some of this was so creative and so, so amazingly creative and, um, and funny. And then other stuff was like, oh God, why did I see that? I can't erase that from my brain. (laughs) (laughs) There's a particularly gorgeous Spanish man that dances. You can watch that for hours. Wow. Do you know that there's an American pop singer with the same name as you? I do. I got a tax return once. You got a what? Wait, wait, I didn't hear you. What? You got a what? You got her tax return ones. Tax returns into my website from one of the theaters she sang at. Oh, how funny. Yeah, we do better in the opera world. Oh, well, oh. there you go, girl. Well, okay. Because we were doing our research and I said, <laughs> wait, that doesn't look like Jessica. I know, right? And people still confuse me. Like, I'm still like crowd, you know, doing crowd control and sending her fans over to Instagram. And because in the beginning, we kind of divided. I, I had Facebook and she had Instagram and then I moved over onto Instagram as well. So, oh, so I haven't checked for on TikTok yet. I tried to be friendly a number of times. Didn't get a response. Hmm. I think you should like, she should, you should invite her to an opera. Yeah. Well, she, she made a comment about me having, that she wasn't that one with the long batting eyelashes. What are you talking about? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She got a little upset when where our Spotify accounts got mixed up. Um, so she asked me to fix that. And I was like, well, her manager asked me to fix that. And I said, well, I don't know anything about Spotify, so I don't know what I can do. Oh. <laughs> okay, one last question, and then we're going to do rapid fire. Oh. What, is that okay, Carrie? Did sure. you have more? No. How, how do you think the pandemic has changed how you see your future and the future of opera? It hasn't changed anything for me. Um, It's just, you know, I appreciate being together with people. I think it's changed 
perhaps my, my father locked the piano when I stopped practicing and I couldn't wait for him to unlock it. And I feel that it's been the same with theatres and the public can't wait to get back inside. And I think that in the long run, it will actually do us good because a lot of us have reflected, have had time to reflect. When in the world, in the history of opera, have all opera singers had a year off, basically? You know, Never, and, you know, ever. People have been with that. Some people have, you know, not coped so well with it um but i think it's a very interesting thing that's probably hopefully never going to happen again um but certainly all the reflection and thinking about how we relate to the public as well and you know having the kinds of social media that annoy us while we're busy but are actually essential when we weren't so busy right um, so yeah i think it's well said good influence. thank you very that's beautiful like, almost loss of work and money and, and and I remember you saying that this was going to be your best year yet, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, well. There's next year. Yeah, I still loved it. Like, I really, aside from the horrible situation that was going on for so many people, I think a lot of, it was, it's difficult for opera singers, I think, to, it's a balance because, yes, it was horrific and horrible things were happening. I lost people myself. But at the same time, I had the opportunity to stop, you know, without being sick, without having right. to pretend that there's nothing wrong and there was something wrong. I could just stop. And, and that was really, really appreciated. Yeah, I get it. Very well put. Thank you. Now, rapid fire, Carrie. Yes. And I have to say that like, as I'm listening to that animal in the background, I'm listening to my big old St. Bernard snore down at the bottom of my stairs right now. <laughs> my sister's dog's woken up. She's taken to sleeping. She's my dog since I arrived. She's just like, oh, you're a human that's going to do everything I want. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Um, what's your best beauty tip? I don't have a beauty tip. Brush your hair. I don't know. <laughs> Drink water. Water, water. Water, water, water. Okay, okay. Okay, what's a song that always gets stuck in your head? A song that always gets stuck in my head. Uh, well, if I'm working on Mandy Shamani, oh, Luce di Quest'anima. It's true, isn't it? Really drive you crazy. That's like a brain right there. Beverly still singing that when I was younger. I was just like, ugh. I'm never going to get that out now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Best advice you were ever given? Best advice I was ever given? Um, don't take it too seriously. Oh, what move? In the back. What? <laughs> the dog barks in the back. Yes! <laughs> I love it. Part of the here. Oh! Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. What's your favorite dessert? Chocolate, anything chocolate, 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 chocolate. I read that. Sorry, I read that. I knew this. That has uh, not changed then. No. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Um, most rebellious thing you ever did as a teenager? <sighs> uh, I think mainly it was just like taking cats and hiding them in my room, like stray cats and stuff. Once I, I, minded, I had something like... There were two cats upstairs because I'd taken my friend in with us and she had two cats. I had a cat, my sister had a cat, and then I found a cat with two kittens, three kittens, sorry. So we had all these cats in the house separated because there was the upstairs cats, the downstairs cats, the cats hidden in my bedroom. Uh, I found <laughs> the cat I hid in my bedroom was a wild cat, like vicious wild cat. Oh. Um, and so basically my father found out because, you know, he doesn't want animals, but we had a lot of animals, the Doberman, all sorts of animals. And... Uh, so I got this cat and I found home to the kittens and then I had to do sex, but I was a teenager and had no money. So the the vet said to me, you know, if you sing me a song, I'll do sex her. So I would literally in the vet clinic singing Oh Mio Babino Caro. And then I finished. He's like, that's great. Thank you. And he proceeded with the operation. I thought you were going to sing, Oh, gee, quest on you. I didn't know all those things. I didn't know all those things. Um, All right, Carrie, so, is it time? Okay, yes. What is your favorite curse word in any language? Vaffanculo. Thank you. Yes. 
Um, and let's see what, um, what movie would you watch on Endless Loop? Endless Loop movie. Like, you know, over and over and over and over. I watched that the other night and it was lovely. Which one? Notting Hill. <gasps> oh, look at us. Oh, I love that one. You know, I love that. I love that street scene because I also watched how they filmed that. The street scene, you know, where everything changes, Notting Hill with the, with, and it goes for, in the different seasons and you see the pregnant lady and, and then the baby and all. And, um, and it was really super cool and how they filmed that, that whole take. I love that movie. That's a great movie. Good one. Okay, Carrie. Last question. Last question. Last question. Okay, if heaven exists, what do you want to hear God say as you enter through the pearly gates? We're all here. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. That's great. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for such a fun chat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I did, you know, we, we really didn't know you so well. And so I, I'm glad we got to get to know you better. Yeah. You could be an honorary screaming diva anytime. Yeah. You're fun. Very, oh my Jesus. Okay. I can't even do that right now. It is 9.30 at night. <laughs> <laughs> here you should see her her high notes are like amazing laser awesome. just boom right there so yeah good luck with this season oh yeah and yeah touch wood all that be well and enjoy australia i will i am i can have a coffee and sit down around people without masks it's really cool that's amazing <laughs> i love that that's I just so cool can't. Thank you for doing this with us, joining the shenanigans, the insanity of all of this. Thank you for doing it. Oh, thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye. 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 I, I have bug bites all over you. I'm so itchy. I was itching in that video. And then I, I noticed that my arm was doing this. It looked really bad. <laughs> going to put that in a promo. <clears throat> Carrie, what exactly is your arm doing? You what go are you back. doing, Mel? What are you doing? <laughs>